I just realized my mic was off this whole time. I'll be right back. Oh, all right, I'm about to go on a rant. Do you know why I don't like um, Apple watches? Why the fuck do I have to charge my fucking battery every time I want to use it? Who has to fucking charge their watch? <sighs> all right, let's start this again. How's it going, everyone? You know, guys, I was on mute when I was talking earlier. I have a flight in three hours, <laughs> but I'm dedicated to come and do a stream before I leave. And I'm uh, thinking I may have forgotten a lot of stuff. How's everyone doing today? What's up, Black Sheep? Let's see. What's up, Uranimus? X, what up? Who else is in here? Philippines, hello. Big chillin', same dude. Great, got my 10th bounty today. Thank you for the sub, I appreciate it. You got a bounty today? What was your bounty? Feed me your bugs, what'd you get? Thank you, Avi Coder, for hosting, I appreciate it. What'd you get, dude? Five hundred and fifty dollars, really? That's awesome! Congrats! Storex says, "What's up?" That's awesome. Well, I haven't got any bounties this month at all, actually, which hasn't been fun. I haven't been able to hack as much as I wanted to, but. I gotta get back into it. I miss hacking, so. Tell me something about CSRF token. I don't do CSRF. Anyone here look at the United Bug Bounty program? All right, how about this? I don't have a whole lot of time to do CTFs today. I want to be offline by, I have to be off by 10 at least, so I can catch my flight and not be late. Um, Give me bug bounty programs. Let's do some light recon or um, or give me a CTF challenge. I can't do um, port trigger stuff right now just because it will take a while and I can't focus on it. And I have so much stress about this trip. I feel like I haven't fully packed everything I needed to. Leroy Jenkins, what up? Should we do QA instead of hacking? There is enough people here to do a QA. What's up, Mitra? How's it going? What you guys think? Do easy challenges, QA, or light recon? You just you just love hacking, huh? You guys love watching me hack because everyone always says hacking, hacking. Mithra, what are you studying for? Let me move this. A little bit, there we go. Much better. OSCP, oof, rough. 
I want to get my OSCP, but I think uh, I'm not about that studying life. I don't know if I could study again, to be honest. All right, let's do QA. Screw it. Let's do QA. Hey, Porn Ward, how's it going? I can't build something right now. I don't have the. I have to leave for a flight soon, so I don't think I can do it. Let me fix this really quick. Whoa, what happened? All right. All right, it's back. Uh, is it possible to submit bugs if you mislabeled them? Why would you resubmit it? I mean, self close and resubmit it? What are you uh, trying to resubmit it for? Oh boy, what just happened here? What a fail. What is happening today? Jesus. All right, drop me questions. I'm gonna go all the way up to the chat and look at all this. I'm gonna try and answer every question, but don't hate me if I don't get it to anything. So let's see. Can I make this chat bigger? Security B, what up? Yeah, clone it. I think I fucked it up. You can go actually self-close your bug. So go down to the comment section, the top left corner on Hacker One. It says self-close. You can say comment. You can self-close it. Self-close it and resubmit it, but. You can just make a comment and have the triage team or the security analyst on the company fix it for you. Why would you, f why would you focus if you, if you just start? Oh, what would you focus on if you just started on Hacker One? Which one of the abilities? Okay, hold on. Learn XSS. XSS is always going to be one of the number one bugs you'll ever find in any bug bounty program. It's never going to go away, not in a while. At least it's going to be away. It's not going to go away for a very long time. Learn XSS. Learn how to do properly recon. I don't want you to go down the rabbit hole of automation, but understand how to do recon. How do you find subdomains that are very uh, unique? How do you find subdomains that other people haven't found before? Um, identifying subdomains that are um, valuable, dev sites, staging sites, um, those kinds of things. If you want a brand new program, if you want to learn, if you're not going after the money, this is something I did. I didn't care about the money aspect. It was nice that I was getting paid from Yahoo, but I was hacking on free programs as well. So if you want VDPs, GM is a good one. Um, Department of Defense is a great one because you're hacking the Department of Defense in the United States. That, all, that itself is a big thing. I know it's not going to pay your bills, but at least you're not hacking some random company for free. Um... And three, set up goals. Um, tell yourself you're going to learn XSS this month, and you're going to find three of them at least, and go for it. Um, that would be the best way to do it. Akshash, Akshan, I can't say your name ever. A.K. Sean S.H.J. That's what I would say. What is your publicly, what do you mean, my, you're not anonymous, one of my bugs or someone else's bug? Suggestion for improving skills for hacking and bug bounty. Um, completely, like, if you're reporting... Um, if you are reporting best practices, let it go. Just let it go. You're never going to get money from it. You're going to get some money from it, but it's not going to scale. Uh, learn how to do the uh, server-side stuff. Um, learn how to find server side bugs or understand what the company's attack vector is or like um, threat modeling is or what's valuable to them and try to find bugs that is very very important to them and i say that because joel made a very good point because he said like you know for us what we care about the most is customer data and they will pay a fuck ton of money for it um oh you said one of my favorite bugs i don't know let's look Hold on, 
let me pull up. Hold on, hold on, chat. Pull up Hacker One right now. It's been a while since I've looked. Well, one of my, well, I didn't really publicly, um, I didn't publicly disclose this bug, but my Snapchat bug that I've been presenting at conferences is one of my favorite bugs. But let me switch over my screen and then let's go, let's go down my profile. Let's talk about some of my um, disclosed bugs. So, am I logged in? No, thank God. All right. Um, this one, I'm going to go down all the ones that I've disclosed and talk about them. And I'll tell you why I like some of them. This one is very, very fun because I really wanted to learn what the CV um, did. It's this one. Um, it lets you actually, it's not an LFI, it's a local file read. I don't know why I call it LFI. But um, as you can see, I didn't care enough to write anything for it because it's a free program. I'm not getting paid to give you a really good report. Sorry. But I gave him enough to... Um, you know, I give him this and I say, hey, do this, and you can, uh, you get the vulnerability. And um, it was good to learn how this works for automation stuff. So that's that. Um, this one was kind of stupid. It was just a brute force. Um, it was pretty easy to find it. It's an easy bug, easy money. Uh, this one was one of my favorites because it was a joke. We were not trying to really look for a bug. Like, we found this days ago, I want to say, and we were just like, do we really want to report a CSS injection? And uh, shout out to Donut. I don't know if he's watching, but shout out to Donut. He turned his CSS injection into a full-blown exploit where he was able to pull the CSRF token completely out uh, within a few seconds. Um, it was insane. It was it was a joke. I went to bed saying that I thought he was trolling. He's like, no, 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 no. I can pull CSRF token for you. Easy, dude. I went to bed. I came back to a ton of messages saying, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck? We, I did it. Where did you, you go? It was a it was a total joke. Um, but it ended up paying. Um, we split it three ways. It was me, Brett, and Donut. Or Zion and Donut. My work laptop's talking shit. All right, let's keep going. This is absolutely one of my favorites, just because of the way that uh, we did this. It was really, really cool. Um, did not expect this to work, but it did work. This is one of my salty moments in the history of me doing hacking is because I found this bug on Snapchat. You can actually read this whole blog if you go to my website. Um, Oh, not this one. Sorry. If you go to my blog, uh, it's about the Jenkins things that I put up there. Um, here. So I found this thing. Uh, I paid me 5K. Um, I did an analysis of what you can do with uh, Jenkins if you find it. But what no one knows or what no one realizes, is they actually paid for the same exact bug. Mine was in dev and the other person who found it was in prod and they got 15k and I got 5k. But it was it was easy money. It took me about a couple hours to find it. Uh, this was my first time actually finding something with recon. Um, I found some. I, I found Sensu. I didn't know what I didn't know what it was at the time. I found Sensu and then Sensu had some logs in it. The logs had access to some password. I spread the password on any port that was open on that same IP address. So the sensor was on like 8080 and then the other one was on uh, RabbitMQ is like 15,000 something port, I think. I sprayed it on every single port that would pop up with a login and it gave me access to, Rab access to RabbitMQ, which was kind of crazy. And this was also like a bug that it took me a couple hours to find. I wasn't happy about the bounty amount. Um, you can see we went back and forth a couple of times after the bounty. They invited me to their office. They took my feedback. What am I going to do about it? Um, XSS. This is what I learned a lot of good stuff, especially like some of these where I had to read a JavaScript file for all of these to find. Um, I don't know JavaScript that well, but here I understood what to look for. I just recognized the pattern. I just kept dominating that pattern, uh, which really helped. 
Um, local flying question. This is really fun because it was my first time actually reporting something to the Department of Defense. I was very scared up until this point when it got disclosed. I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to jail. They didn't think it was going to be fun. Um, nothing good. This is a really fun one because I found it by accident and then I report a couple of companies and then it turns out this was actually a vulnerability uh, affecting um, Ruby on Rails and I got to be credited for it and I got another bounty for it right here. Uh, that was a really fun experience. And of course, I can never say no to these uh, SQL injections on Yahoo. These were, I found, not this one, there was another one that I wrote a blog post about um, I can't find it, I don't think, but, um, that gave me three, $3,000 bounties and I wrote a blog post about it. My, f my original bugs that I reported, you can see they were trash. Like I was just reporting garbage. Um, this one wasn't a garbage one. This was actually a, it was an, it was a local file read, um, on a yahoo.net asset, but it was out of scope. Didn't get anything for it. Um, that's it. That's about it. All right, let's go on with questions. Uh, now, I'm, sick. I'm shifting from sysadmin to pen testing, and it's freaking hellish, I must say. I'm way over my head. You're not way over your head because you're a sysadmin. You know a lot of more shit that most people don't know. You don't have to learn about networking. You don't know how. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to learn how to. Uh, Stuff with Linux, like you, you should know how to do said org and stuff that people struggle with. So that could be a very huge advantage. I do think that security could be a little bit harder to get used to or grasp some of these ideas. But what I would recommend is do do pen tester lab, do hacker one oh one. Um learn those ideas that way. Honestly, it might be easier to learn them hands on than actually reading them. Get a copy of uh, the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. Get the ebook for it. Um, get the uh, Hacker Playbook by Peter Kim. It's a really, really good book to read and understand the mentality of being offensive. Uh, I would re really recommend doing those two. Or those three books, at least. Is it okay to run Lazy Recon on a droplet? Absolutely. If you want, scroll down, go to my uh, profile on Twitch, and download or not download. Click on my DigitalOcean link and get a $50 credit for free. What are some keywords you look when you're manually parsing JavaScript? API, V1, V2, um, just things that I know are going to be API related just so I don't miss them. Um, I also look for things like post, get, op uh, delete, um, parameters, I and par parameters that I think would be valuable. Um, I look for I'm doing it manually actually um, I also look for the string quote URL quote uh, column and that also could bring you up some stuff but what would you want to do manually there are some tools you can use uh, best book you recommend could be any topic what was that book called I think it was called the art of not giving a fuck check it out it's pretty good um, 18 teachers reduced severity of a supplement takeover. I submitted to low, never seen a low severity supplement takeover. Uh, depends. Was it on ATT.com or was it on some random website they own? Which language would be good for beginners? English. I'm kidding. Um, Learn Bash and Python. Everyone says Python's the best thing. I'm starting to like Python by just reading some of the codes that I've read, la read lately. I would say do Python. Hi there. Well, hello. Uh, is it for beginners to start on a large program or a small program company? I say large program so you don't you have plenty of things to play with, different stuff to learn. Like you can't say, well, I don't know where to learn recon and like how to automate stuff. I would say do a large program. That's just me. Um, how would you suggest an aspiring pen tester red teamer to pivot its way? Also, and start with bug browner, something I've always wanted to do. Uh, Mithra, hit me up. Let's talk. Um, I would like to hear more about this. But you are a pen tester. If you are a pen tester, 
Um, depends on your background. Like, are you doing networking? I mean, network pen testing, um, internal, external assets. That depends on what you do. But honestly, like, the biggest thing that I understand with a lot of hackers is that they understand the fundamental of web application security. What I mean is you know how to find XSS, you know how to find, uh, how to exploit a CSRF, but you don't know how to recognize it. There's a difference between knowing how to exploit it, like, hey, I tell you here's an XSS, go and pop alert one, versus saying, where is the XSS? You have to understand the pattern, uh, the pattern recognition uh, and things like Juice Shop and um, Hack the Box, and Hacker 101 are there to help you. Use us to your advantage. Um, honestly, though, like from a red team pen testing background, it shouldn't be as hard to come up with the bug bounties. Uh, regardless, having complete control of content on .18.net subdomain is more than a little severity, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not sure. I would say request uh, help from Hacker 1. Let them look into it and see what they say. It might be a rule from AT&T saying that they have just marked them as low for some reason. Uh, book suggestion. Uh, I already did this one, but I'll give a couple more books outside of real life bug hunting. Um, there's one called Read the Fucking Manual or the Red Team uh, Field Manual, whatever you want to call it. It's a really, really good one. Um, I said do the Hacker's Playbook, which is really, really good. Um, any of the book that are... Um, what is it called? Hold on, let me grab it. No bullshit. These are the books that I bought when I was in college. And when I first started doing bug bounties and what I was doing was no, no, like no longer was helping me, right? Cheesy, but it helped. Professional pen testing, penetration testing, testing. I can't even speak today. Um, didn't read the whole thing just because it did just more than what I wanted it to do. But it has some really cool stuff that tells you how to do information gathering, passive information gathering, um, planning your pen test, managing it, um, ice cap social engineering, wireless network, automated tools was a good one to talk about burp a little bit. Basics of pen testing. It's a really good book to read it. Uh, this camera right here. Read it. Um, it wasn't that expensive, I don't think. Uh, this one, I didn't read this book because I wanted to become a hacker. This was to get me through um, interviews. I wanted to get a web application security job and uh, I regret going after those because I no longer want to be a security person. But um, it tells you the basics. Like it talks about CWEs. And then the reason why I think this is good to read is because they sometimes tell you how to fix stuff, right? And knowing how to fix stuff also gives you an idea uh, on like how you can, how people approach a fix. Like how, what are the, some dumb fixes that I've given this so you can bypass it, right? Um, oh no, I want to be a security person. I just don't want to be an AppSec person. Like I don't want to be an AppSec engineer. But yeah, it's a really, really good book. Um, I would definitely give it a try. It tells you a lot of the things that um, you may think you're missing. I'm trying to look for another chapter of this, but good book. Obviously, this one, I just talked about this. It's a very short book. You can see it's a very small book. Uh, but there's almost everything in here. Like I just opened this up randomly, SQL map, web screenshotting. And then this is a very, very good book. I absolutely love this book. It's called The Hacker Playbook. And 
it's a very very good book to get i want to get the new one soon and read it um but like look i'm just opening random pages it talks about findings and it has burp in here too xss i think yeah really great books recommend buying them um get the ebook whatever works with you give them a re read i think that these are really good books to have um but i'm not really a big fan of reading books <laughs> Um, I try to read books just for myself to force myself to get better as a person. It's just personal improvement, but I learn more by doing it. All right, how much time do I got? I got another hour. Uh, let's see. Where to focus as a new bug hunter? I already talked about that. DNS piping one, right? Owning the cloud. Yeah, that one. DNS rebinding. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of my favorite bugs I've ever found. Did you find the val Valve one just through recon? Yes, I did. Uh, the MySQL was a brute force of the MySQL instance, was it? No. Camera quality is dope today. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have two cameras and I keep looking at this one. And this is the one I'm supposed to look at. <laughs> um, where was I? <laughs> you porn pug. Yeah. What percent of time do you spend on recon with just testing? Depends on my mood. Right now, I'm way over recon. I don't want to hack on programs that require recon because that's all I do on stream and I'm super tired of it. But I know the value and what's I, I, I see the value and why recon is important. And when I started getting better at recon and I really got my methodology down is where I started finding better bugs and bigger programs. So I don't spend what I really realize is I don't spend a lot of time doing recon as much as I I'd used to. What I do is I just run my script that, you know, just gets a bunch of hosts from a ton of different places. Then I have it. Uh, look for some re really easy word lists, like maybe 400 lines or 500 lines, um, and have it look for those easy finds. And then I do screenshots just to see, just to see what's important and like what looks juicy. And I pick an app and I just stick to it for a little bit. And I just tell myself, I'm not going to give up on this target until I find a valid moon. And my standards just drop. I go, I want to find an SSRF and I go, fuck it. I'll take an XSS. At some point, I'll take a CSRF if I have to, but I don't like reporting CSRF. Uh, how do you differentiate if some code or JS script is malicious from a huge chunk? I don't know what you're, what you're asking. Why does that... How does that help with bug boundaries? Giveaway pen tester lab. No. it's on. I'm doing one on YouTube, uh, on Twitter right now, if you want one. Um, do you take permissions from the company before running SQL map? No, I try to run SQL map as a last resort. And if I do it, I don't try to thread it or make it super uh, annoying. How do you find endpoints? Um, read JavaScript files, uh, browse the site, crawl it with burp. Uh, what's your opinion and suggestion about fuzzing? What do you mean you're anonymous? Um, you have to explain. Can you ask that question again and then explain what you mean so I don't forget it? Would you do a blog post on books and other stuff you recommend? I'm thinking about it, maybe. Uh, I've caught some tools that don't grab all endpoints. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Then you have to do it manually, that makes sense. I'm a former Intel analyst. Nice, trying to switch to cyber ramping up in the IT stuff, it's kicking my ass. Keep up the good work, don't give up. I know it's it's I know it's really hard to, uh, to be new and trying to get started, but I promise you'll be worth it. Uh, the Art of Not Giving a Fuck, it's a really, really good book. Yep, it's a really, really good book. Um, when do you do when you do recon? Do you find multiple interesting things each day? No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, <laughs> I have to go to my reports directory on directory research and read every single like I grab through all of it to find the endpoints. So sometimes the historic data is what gives me better results than my older stuff or my newer stuff. I mean, I'm starting on Python. Good luck. Uh, read book, art of not giving a F, and everything is fucked for better reading experience. Awesome. Um, there's another one that I gotta look. I don't know where it's at. You mentioned brute force and Valve's program. Let's suppose they don't allow brute forcing. How to justify a bug using directory search, for example? I don't. What program would say that? The brute forcing stuff that's out of scope isn't directory brute forcing. It's brute forcing for passwords. It's brute forcing for pin codes. It's brute forcing for 2FA. Those are annoying things that people report. Um, unless they say, uh, the, the stuff that says automated scanning is because people are copy pasting from burp. 
those are the things that are out of scope as long as you're not going to send a million requests a second to a company's website while you're doing directory brute force i think you'll be okay can i hit you up on here twitter i love to talk um hit me up on twitter send me a tweet me right now i'll uh, send you a follow so my dm is open for you have you explored any cool dns or exploitation i just did a dns rebinding that i'm doing a talk at conferences um that is a really good one plus one to the read the freaking manual yep amazing book how do you keep all your scan data organized um I have all my directory brute forcing go into a reports folder on directory search, which is our default for directory search, and that's why I use that tool. Uh, all my subdomains go into a slash host on directory brute forcing tool that I use, so like directory search, for example. Inside of that usually has a slash host. So every time I write search.sh, it puts that into the host with that name. Um, so it would pipe it into a Yahoo, you know, sports at yahoo.com, for example, and it would always sit there. Um, you can do a lot of different ways. I would just make a folder called recon data and based on targets. Depends on how you're doing it. Um, let's see. Uh, what's the small book name? That was uh, the Redfield Manual. This one. All right, sip of coffee real quick. All right, back at it. Um, wow, I caught up to almost all the questions. Um, where else was I? Hi, Naham said, got basic knowledge of all sorts of web application vulnerability and how to find them, but I get... Well, when I get started, I kind of, wait, hold on, I can't read this fight. Thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. But when I get started, I kind of get confused, like, should I look for course, SQL injection, etc. But pursue, well, I would say, focus on one buck type. Stop saying, I want, stop looking at everything as like, stop looking at the whole big picture of web apps, right? Like, stop saying, stop looking at it, like, course, SQL injection, etc. No, look at this company. I always start with XSS. The reason I do it is the easiest one to identify. It's a pattern of its own. And through XSS, I can also identify other things. So it doesn't mean that I have to go put script alert in there, but I could do something like uh, an HTML injection with some templating at the end of it. And um, depending on the context, I could also catch other bugs, right? If you're in a parameter, for example, in a get parameter, um, you put a quote in there, it might come back and say, XSS say there's a SQL I, my SQL might have an error. Look for one bug type, two bug types at most, and then make it more. So I first started doing XSS only, then I did XSS and IDOR. Then I got the two down. I knew exactly what to look for when I was looking for those two. Now I do XSS, IDOR, SSRF. Cool. I know how to find all three of these now. Next one, XSS, IDOR, SSRF. And then the RCE comes with you know, it's a whole different package of its own, and then do that. And if you have recon, if it's a big company doing recon, that's a fifth avenue for you to find, huh, no pun intended. Uh, we have a fifth way of finding bugs, which is finding those assets that could be Jenkins, um, could be having GitLab or something. You can find easy bugs that way too. Um, so just don't go and look for every single thing I, I could think of. Just focus on it. Like, hey, I'm going to find XSS today, and I'm going to look at these programs that are, uh, I mean, these subdomains or this one program that's huge or whatever that is. Uh, Geek, let me know if that helped. Um, I would love to answer more questions in regards to that because it seems like, but the one thing that I tell everybody as of late is I understand the hackers are, know how to find these vulnerabilities. Like they know how to exploit it. They just don't know how to look for it. Um, and that's because you have to build your own methodology of how you look for those bugs. What was your first live event like? Well, I've, um, that's a good question because I've been working at HackerOne for a very long time. So I've actually been a part of the team that makes the life hacking events uh, happen at HackerOne. So I have a very unique uh, point of view on the life hacking events. But I did get to participate in H1415, the first time HackerOne threw it because Airbnb was a customer and they wanted me to hack. 
and I want to say I made twenty thousand or something like that, twenty to thirty thousand that day, and uh, I ranked number two because Ruby, who is also a good friend of mine, sniped me and beat me with three points. So, what am I gonna do about it? So, do recon to understand the infrastructure. Yes, understand like, like you have to. You really want to understand. You want to really understand how they do things at this company. And why they do them the way they do it. Understand where corporate stuff go. Understand how they label their dev staging sites. Understand where their DevOps tools go. Understand where um, they make mistakes. If you see they, they're making mistakes for SSRFs, for example, look for it all. If you see them leaking Swagger UI on one subdomain, mass spam it on all of them and see if you find other ones, especially on the dev sites that may have interesting stuff. Um, what was your first bug ever? My first bug ever was a crappy XSS that was self XSS. I got rejected and then it turns out it was CSR fable and they ended up paying for it. My first bug that actually meant something to me though was, um, I got three SQL injections on Yahoo and that is the day I told myself that hacking is going to be something in the future for me. That's going to get me paid or get me somewhere. And ever since that three SQL I happened, I just gunned it. Like I just booked it to become a better hacker because come on, like I was 20 something years old. I was very, very young. I was still in college. I got $9,000 in a day, $9,000. My rent was like 600 bucks at that point. <laughs> my whole rent was $600, um, uh, including all my utilities. What was I going to do with 9,000? So I told myself, this is something that's going to have a future. I'm going to bank my entire career on it and see where it goes. And to this day, I'm very happy that I did that. How do you feel about web apps that terminate sessions on valid invalid inputs as a security feature? They're annoying as F. Uh, Nahamsek, where can I hit you up? At Nahamsek on Twitter. Easiest way to do it. The cloud provided my boop you dough. Oh, so I don't know what that is, but let's see. Let's see what else we, we have. Nahamsek, I meant to ask what's your approach on fuzzing and what would you recommend a person who's considering to fuzz from now on? I mean, it depends what are you fuzzing, Unanimous. Like, I spend a good portion of time on any endpoint that seems interesting enough that could get me paid. I don't look at it as, am I going to get, like, I don't mean like, is this going to give me $10,000? I just look at it like, if I spend three, let's say I spend three hours on this, and the endpoint is something that hints SSR, for example, right? If I spend three, four, five hours, and I get a 5K bounty, pretty worth it, right? Like, it's five thousand dollars, five hours, a thousand an hour. But if I'm fuzzing an endpoint to get a you know reflective XSS and XSS on the medium range pays two hundred fifty dollars, and I spend six hours figuring it out, that's three hundred dollars almost two fifty fifty dollars an hour. I don't know if that's worth it. Um, but it's also sometimes it makes me it's a challenge right like i tell myself okay now it's personal i don't care what it is now it's personal i'm going to pop this thing i'm going to find xss in this thing or i'm going to pop this filter um it all depends uh my twitter dms are closed i know send me a tweet i'll give you a follow um and then you can dm me what's the benefit of using mysql db it's just one of the oldest uh databases out there and that has a lot of resources but i know it's not the fastest would you accept a private invite for a program which has a max call max of one call second rate limiting? No, I would just decline it and get another invite. Um, can you get something about? Can you get some things about cores? What do you mean? Um, you're good at answering questions. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, take a look at your repos when you have a chance. There's an important PRs like recon profile update. Oh, absolutely. I'll have a look. Um, let's see. X is doing work today. He's helping out a lot. Thank you. Uh, what's the meaning of triage on Hacker One? Triage means the bug has been looked at. It's been verified. The the behavior we we're talking about has been verified. So it's sometimes pending the customer to say if they want to take it or not. But most cases, in most cases, in the case that your bug is valid. Please recommend books to Bug Bounty. No, thank you. We already did that like a million times. Have you tried escaping the browser sandbox? No. You got a website. What if you got a website? What would be your start to end approach? Define the scope of the website first. Is it just a one single app or is it a uh, star dot site dot com? Drop that comment and I'll let you know. Um, ask the question again so I don't forget what you were asking. 
Um, no shave until I found the bug. <laughs> hey, it's no shave November, so might as well. What was your first? <laughs> what was my first rollout hacker one? You guys ready? Um, <laughs> no, not November. <laughs> Let's skip that. Um, what was my first rollout hacker one? I came in as a security associate intern. I don't know what it meant. Nobody knew what it meant. But hold on one sec. Archer, come here. Come here. Come here, buddy. Say hi. Come on. Come on. Jump. Up. Hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hi, buddy. Want to hack? All right, chill. All right, so I came in as a, I came in as a security, um, what was a security associate intern, and my job was to take care of the hackers. There wasn't a lot of them back then, and the other thing that I had to do was make sure the customers were doing the things that were right for our hackers, and I also helped a little bit with the triage team. I was actually the first triage uh, member at Hacker One after my role ended, um, as an intern. And then, go on, get down. See, this is the bad part about having dogs, it's dog hair. But yeah, I was an intern and then I worked on triage and I worked on our customer teams for a while. And then I moved over to our hacker success and community team, which I absolutely enjoy working with now. How did you land your job at H1? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I actually was a bit unhappy with Hacker One at the time that um, before I got in, uh, before I got employed. So I uh, I met Yobert and uh, I met Yobert and Mikhail at DefCon uh, six years ago, and those are the first folks that I met. Him and Jack Finite, who works at uh, Facebook now. And a year later, I went to their office, or two years later, I went to their office. And at their office, I um, gave him feedback, and my feedback was very, very harsh. Um, I was just very unhappy about the stuff that Hacker One was doing. So then I went home, and I felt really, really bad about my feedback that I gave them. But instead of just ignoring all the feedback that I gave him, I reached out to Yobert, and I'm pretty sure I can pull up the tweet, uh, DM for it too. And I asked him, hey, are you guys hiring, and can I come and um, help you guys out with you know the feedback that I gave you? Because... I would love to, you know, um, be a part of that solution and not just be, um, you know, and just not, I don't want to bitch to bitch. I never want to bitch about anything um, without offering a solution or a help, if that makes sense. I don't think it's right to go and tell people that they, they think that they do aren't good or that needs room for improvement without it being actionable. And I really want to be a part of that solution. I still have been trying to stay a part of that solution as much as I can. Um, thanks for the tips. Would start with XSS and IDOR and gradually move to other vulnerabilities. Good work, Geek. Keep it up. Could you explain why even XSS is XSS that is not stored is bad for a company? Depends. Like, are you finding an XSS on a marketing site that has no user data? Not that good. But if you're finding a XSS on a reflected XSS in a site where you can, I don't know, transfer money or it's an app where you can actually change a user password, um, it could be different, right? Um, but having reflected sometimes is a lot less valuable to most companies than stored because the action of you having to provide a link to click on in order for the reflected XSS to work it's also some sort of a user interaction to some companies to so keep that in mind have you ever concerned that you'd be misidentified as a malicious hacker instead of a bug hunter uh do you use a vpn when testing first question no um i had fought i had family that looked down on the, the, my profession i won't say who in my family but members of my family did not like what i did i did not care um People that I, you know, in my family, instead of calling me a hacker, they would tell me, oh, you're just a security professional. No, I would correct them and say, I am a hacker because I am tired of people saying the exact same thing. Like, are you malicious? Um, Tommy did a really good thing in his, um, Tommy Doggy G did an interview with, uh, I don't know what 
media outlet for becoming a million dollar hacker and in his interview he said people tell me real hackers don't say they are i mean come on doggy is a monster hacker i don't like these weird weird um generalizations about hackers so no i don't i don't care honestly um i'll correct people all day long do i use a vpn when testing no i have a vps um which kind of you know mask my identity uh last time you found this ftp drop box how did you recognize that was an ftp uh i think that was on showdown i had the port open for it and we we're messing around with it that's how we knew what it was you can also I mean you can also uh end map it and see what ports it has open hacking 101 and real world bug hunting are the same kind of not really sorry there was something like in the air <laughs> uh kind of not really um one of them is free on Hacker One, the other one isn't. Um, hey new watcher, hey new watcher, always see you ask this to others. What other hobbies do you have not related to tech? Okay. Well, I play a lot of video games. That's one. Um, I play video games almost every day after work. And I use that uh, I use that as a way for me to disconnect. And what I mean is I literally play two hours, maybe an hour, I don't know, however long I feel like a PUBG. And that's my way of transitioning from work because I work at home too. From work to whatever else I'm doing. And sometimes that's going back to hacking. Um, hit me up when you play Apex Legend. All right, will do. <laughs> um, but outside of video games, um, I do like to be a wannabe photographer, so I go and take like, random photos. I fly drones sometimes. Uh, my wife and I love to travel, so if I have money, um, every time I do a big bounty, I try. If I make a big bounty, I try to go on a trip. I love traveling a lot. Um, what else? Um, I think that's it. Um, hacking is a hobby of its own. I know it's not. You want it to be non tech related, but. Hacking was always a hobby that turned out to be the money maker. So, um, Myth, just send me a DM. Thank you. We'll talk. Uranimus, I first put XSS once in a while, especially for filter bypass. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know why, but I don't look for reflected XSS anymore either. As much as I should, I miss those a lot. Like I don't look for them uh, regularly. Um, I look for stuff that's gonna get me paid. Like I know store XSS is gonna get me more money than a reflected, so I just skip reflected XSS. But I don't think that you should uh, skip that. What were challenging during initial bug bounty days? Lack of knowledge, or thank you for the follow. Lack of knowledge or something. How did you overcome that? Um, well, uh, it was hard to do bug bounties in the beginning for me because not only I lacked the knowledge, but there weren't a lot of targets out there. And B, um, I was still in college, so I had plenty of time. <laughs> Um, but what I mentioned earlier, you should watch the VOD later. These books, um, I read all of them on top of the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. And um, they kind of helped. I did a lot of Hack the Box, uh, Hack the Site, uh, DVWA. Um, what else? Anything that I get my hands on, I did. Even any VDP that I got my hands on, I, I did it just so I can learn. Uh, $50 an hour, I don't know if it's worth it. People are crying with 50 minimum. Right, but you have to think about it, Cyberborg. Like, I, I, when I was doing my initial bug bounty days, that was absolutely a good thing. Like, $50 an hour was pretty good. But at this point, I have a full-time job now. I don't have the time to sit there for five hours to look for a bug that's going to give me 250 when I know I can go and find that money somewhere else with $2,500, right? So you have to think about the context matters. For me, the context is I'm a guy that has a full-time job who's been around bug bounties for a while and I just want to hack for a few hours to make extra cash to, for an investment, for um, for fun, to take my wife out or whatever, right? So I have to think about how I can make money faster instead of thinking about... Um, sorry, I have to make more money faster than just making money fast. Does that make sense at all? Um, let's see. What's up, guys? What's up, Nissan? 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 Uh, do you scan using your host computer? I always do it on my VPS. DigitalOcean is the way to go. Um, 
you got a website, what would you start approach be? Single website, not, okay. What I do is I did this video once for airbnb.com. I'm not gonna do it again. I may post it later on, but go and break up the site into different portions. And I'll tell you what it is. For Airbnb's case, there are three different levels of user access. And I can tell you what those are. There are three major ways. One is a host, one is a guest, and the third one that no one really thinks about is the enterprise way where you have your own domain. You can actually create a company and use it to book bookings for Airbnb. That's three things. There are three huge websites under each of those. The personal, you know, the guest one is huge because you can book stuff, edit stuff, send money, split money, split the booking, share your itinerary, share your information, look at buildings, whatever, right? As a host on the other end, you can do the exact opposite of that. You can make a listing, you can host experiences, you can set up rules, you can set up your Wi-Fi, you can give them direction, you can import stuff, you can make a team that manages that. Those are all different things to look at. So I break them apart and I go through every single one of those and I look at every single functionality available. So if I am a host, or sorry, if I have a guest on Airbnb, what can I do? I have a profile. Can I edit my profile? Let's go all the way through all the endpoints. Next, booking. Can I book anything? Okay, I'm gonna go become a host, make my own listing, so I'm in control of both input and output. So I created the listing with this account, but I'm focused on the booking or the guest account. So I'm gonna send data to the host on this end as much as I can and look at those behaviors. So break up the app in different portions and look at every single endpoint. Um, but also while you focus. So the first thing that I did with, what I mean by focusing is the first thing I did was, uh, shout out to Patrick, um, IT security guard. Him and I found a bug, uh, a bug that was a stored XSS on something that I can't say what it was, unfortunately. It was a, that had a filter on it. And I bypassed the filter for us and we got a 5K bounty. I was like, huh, that was a really easy access to find. I wonder why nobody else had found it. And at this point, I wasn't the first group of invited hackers. I was like in the third group of hackers that got invited. So I realized no one could recognizing this pattern of XSS. We just focused on XSS at that point. That's all we looked for. And then Brett came into the picture at that point. like, hey, let's look for more complex ones. So we just looked for XSS. Towards the end, when we were running out of XSS, I was just like messing with the ID numbers for iDoors, right? And I changed the number at one point. I was like, holy shit, that worked. I wonder, huh, what other endpoints can I do this with? And it turns out most of their endpoints were vulnerable. Not all of them, but most of them were vulnerable. Um, so if you break them apart and you have it organized in a way where you go after each portion for those bug types and you just go down the list, it just makes it easier to manage. Which program should I start hacking as a beginner? I already answered that, but just go to DOD, IBM, Yahoo, GM, whatever one. Uh, let's see, should I use a free VPN? No, get a VPS for five bucks, make your life easier. Uh, did anyone remember the 5th of November? Yep, November 5th is today. Are you making a joke about, um, remember, remember the 5th of November? AMAS or Sublister, both, why not do both? Um, yeah, why not both? Because Jason Haddock said we should use AMS. Yeah, well, that works for him. I say you should use Cert Spotter and Cert that is H, but uh, you still see me use both AMS and <laughs> uh, Sublister. Last time you found this, we already talked about this, I felt like. I literally just, did you just ask this question again? Hold on, let me see. I really wonder if you asked this question twice. I don't know. I already answered the Dropbox question, though. Um, Doggy G is dope. Absolutely. What about VPNs? No. I get loads of name calling in my family and friends for being a hacker. Come on, man. Who do bug bounty guard you when you're sleeping and helping protect your data? Confused by that sentence. Ever got requests from bad Russian hackers for stuff like that? Oh, yeah. I've also get a lot of those. Can you hack my girlfriend's Facebook thing? They're annoying. What's my dream car? I want an i8. I want a BMW i8. I'm going to get one soon, eventually. I, don't, I mean soon in a few years, but hopefully one day. How did you get into hacking? Ha. Um, I didn't know this was hacking when I was doing it, but my brother, I have an older brother, and 
Um, him and my mom would always keep me off the computer. So I would focus on school. I wasn't good at school. Um, so when my brother would leave and my mom wouldn't be home, she'd be going to the store or something. I wanted to play video games quickly. So guess what I would do? I would try and brute force the password until I got in. And then I found out brute forcing is the dumbest thing I should do because some of these computers that had bugs in them, right? Like I didn't know there were bugs, but I knew there was these things I would do, these commands I would type in and it would get me past the login. Um, and that was my first initial uh, intro to hacking. But the other thing was also like next level shit. <laughs> um, I found that I used to go to these gaming places back home where you would have to pay to play video games. And I don't know who showed it to me, but someone showed me a bug where you would type in this thing inside the login page. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was a SQL injection, I'm pretty sure. And it would give me free gameplay. And then I got into web hosting because I wanted to make money as a kid. It was easy. I would design websites. And then my server or uh, my reseller got hacked. And that's when I wanted to learn how to do it so I can just protect it. May you please show that book again. Eggs, can you do me a favor? Make a command for books and maybe we can put these in there. Thank you, X. I appreciate it. Um, have a different Twitter handle. How to DM? I don't have DMs open. Send me a tweet. Whatever question you have, send me a tweet. Anyone read the Hacker Methodology Handbook? You mean the Hacker Web Hacker Web Application Hackers Handbook? Uh, if you like to travel, then make a trip to Costa Rica. I absolutely want to do that. I agree. Hacking from a beach is the best thing ever. Greeting from Costa Rica. I will definitely keep that in mind. I think that'll be really, really fun. Uh, million Mask March. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Yep. Which is recommended for a first book? The Web Application Hackers Handbook. How do you go from having a big list of subdomains to finding XSS, SSR of XXC? So if you find a list of domains, identify the domains that look interesting to you. And I've talked about that a million times today. And then just 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 use it, use that methodology. So here's the thing. Listen, if you go to my YouTube video, I made my first video I ever made was about recon, and I talk about how you need to define a methodology to how to do recon on a vast on a large asset um, bug bounty program, and I also talk about single bug bounty program. Once you figured out the big picture recon, you have to minimize it to the single app recon how do you find bugs you have to figure out both it's not you can do one or the other um, but once you have those um, really interesting bugs or really interesting domains go through them do a directory brute force go sign up for an account go and um, go and look log in with your account see if you can identify bugs put you know anything that you have a user input for test it um, the context makes a difference like if you're in a profile page, see if you can XSS it. What if you put a blind XSS payload um, in your username, see if it fires other places? Like you have to test. It's always going to be trial and error. Are you streaming from H1 event? Absolutely, yes, uh, hopefully. Um, thank you for all the great insights. Absolutely, you're welcome. If you want access your girlfriend's data you got a big problem in your relationship yeah no can you hack my girlfriend people are so stupid I, I agree how to avoid dms and emails with questions like how to hack i just don't answer them dude like this is why i closed my um twitter dms was i was just getting a lot of weird questions like i really like to help people i think uh i like i want to help people as much as i can but a, I don't have the time to message everybody back. I, I apologize. I don't. But if you ask me a solid question when you I know you have tried and I know I can help, I would be more than happy to answer it. But outside of that, I just ignore it. They'll go away. I don't feed into trolls. How you keep updated with new types of bugs other than XSS? Read everything you get your hands on. The Hacker One Hacktivity, blog post, um, Reddit, the Hacker News, whatever else you can get your hands on. 
send those folks to my inbox. <laughs> Let's see. Command add bug. Oh, that's how you do it. Wow, I'm a noob. Thanks, X. You're the best, man. I appreciate it. Just ran a sub root for like three days straight using Jason Haddock's DNS wordless. Found some absolute gold that AMAS and everything else missed. That's cool. Awesome. Good work, Leroy. Just found out about your channel. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what background is needed for hacking? Um, understand basic of Linux, the command line. Joel was really, really on point when he said learn how to do LS, um, awk, curl, um, grep, um, learn regex, um, learn some basic programming so you can automate some stuff, learn the basics of web technology, what are some ports, what are some common open ports, what are post, get, all the different requests, um, and then learn and to get into the web app hacking stuff. Uh, maybe a dumb question. There's no dumb questions. Uh, if I see CSRF token in an HTML form, is that normal or possible? I mean, that CSRF token is shown to you. I mean, what do you like? The question should be, what can you do with that? If you can't answer the question, what can I do with the CSRF token that's in this form? Then just skip it. But that's your CSRF token. That's more than likely it's attached to that form. Did you ever figure out the HTTPS request smuggling? I found a few of those yesterday. Um, no, I wanted to do more of them today, but because I fly out in the next couple of hours, I just wanted to hang out with you guys a little bit and not worry about streaming any... Um, and not really worry about any um, actual work. Do you believe in automated vulnerability scanners, LOL? Um, like what? Like actual scanners? No. Um... I don't, um, I don't rely on, I used to rely on scanners, but then I realized like if the scanner is doing the work, I'm not learning anything. And that's the biggest thing. You want to learn how those things works. Um, I use scanners to find bugs, not because I wanted to get paid, but because I didn't know how to look for it myself. So I would find that bug and it would say SQL injection or XSS, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, this site is vulnerable to XSS. And then I would peek and look for it. And if I couldn't find it, I would look for the endpoint that was identified as exploitable. Then I would look and exploit it myself. And if I failed again, then I would look at how they were doing it. The scanner was doing it to identify it. And then I would learn it and keep playing with it until I figured it out. And then um, I just stopped at some point because it was just enough. Just to be clear, that's not my bug. It's a uh, disclosed bug from somebody else. That is uh, Techno Geek's bug, and it's he. It was at a live hacking event over one of the uh, Shopify's. Um, I think it was a Shopify device, and I don't know how I identified it. I should have asked him during the stream. But once I do my video with, uh, once I do my video with about mobile hacking I'm going to have him explain some of these bugs as well all right what else the humble bundle books has some good books in them yep uh, wait till Christmas time there's a lot of them that happen a lot of the hackers give them away for free um, a lot of the community people give them away for free you should definitely check them out once you see them do you feel like it would be harder to find bugs as time goes by. What is the general direction the space is going towards, in your opinion? I don't think it's going to be harder to find bugs. I think it just becomes more competitive, and you have to keep up with the competition. Um, it's hard for me to like talk about the space because I work at a vendor, and I don't want my comments to be taken as my employer's opinions. Duh. But I do think the bug bounties are still going to be around. People are still going to pay for bug bounties. I mean, no offense to pen testers, but there's a lot of companies that I see that do hundreds of thousands of dollars of bug bounty uh, payments a day or a, a month or whatever. They pay a ton of money. And they also do pen tests in parallel. The difference is some of these uh, pen testers, like, they're not, it's not that they're not good. They're just very time-bound. Like, they have to do a million different things for this company. It's not 
so much to go deep into those applications that's just for compliance and some other things that the company is asking for so they don't get enough. But I think that the scene itself is going to be a combination of bug bounties and pen test. Um, you've seen all the bug bounty companies are doing pen tests now, next gen, whatever you want to call it, uh, crowdsource pen testing, whatever else. Um, but I don't think bug bounties are going to go anywhere. I think that if the U.S. government and all these different governments, like especially in Europe, if they get behind bug bounties when it becomes a requirement to run your own vulnerability, vulnerability disclosure programs, it's going to even push bug bounties to a next level. So I mean the governments are going to require every company, at least every government branch maybe, to have a bug bounty program. Maybe not a bug bounty program, or have a way for security researchers who find a vulnerability to be able to report it to them. And I think that's when it's going to take bug bounties to the next level. Top 10 hackers to follow on Twitter. Oof. Asking tough questions today. Uh, follow Dakin. Follow Zayed, aka B. Brewer House. Follow, let's see. Like, there's a difference between following hackers like friends and you know, get great hackers versus following hackers who are publishing stuff too. But I'm going to name a couple of people that I can just think of right now. Uh, Smeagol's, Franz Rosen, uh, Matthias, I can't ever say his name. Um, Alvin Byrne, I think is how you say it. Uh, follow Techno Geek. Um, follow Tom Nom Nom. Uh, follow Stoke, obviously. Follow uh, Z Shano. Follow uh, the Cyber Mentor. Um, Ed Overflow is a really good dude. Um, he put some really, really good stuff. He's a great mentor. Uh, Ed, if you're watching this and you're quiet, I love you, man. You do some really good stuff. Um, what else? Um, Patrick, aka IT Security Guard. Um, who else? NT, um, aka Security Let me think. Who else? Uh, Arnie, he's a really good hacker. Um, Live Overflow is a beast, but I'm trying to keep it more to bug bounty hunters. Let's see. Um, Space Raccoon, really, really good hacker. Um, let me think. Oh, Pete Jaworski, obviously. Duh. Um, who else? Board Engineer, really, really good. Albino Wax from Burp Suites team, really, really good people. Um, wow, there's so many people. J Justin Kennedy. Um, so many people I can think of. Uh, John Botterini, I love John. Uh, he doesn't do hacking as much as he used to, but he's, he does publish some really good write-ups, so shout to him. Um, who else does write-ups? Jack Cable, Cable J. He does some really cool write-ups, interesting stuff. Um, let's see, who else can I think of? I think those are probably some of my top people that I would recommend. Um, it's not that I don't like other people that I'm not naming. It's just those are the people that I've seen them actually publish work of theirs or help. Also, Nafi is a really good one to follow right now. He's dropping some bomb right now. He's dropping some knowledge bombs right now on Twitter. Um, it should be NN Wakelam on Twitter. Go follow him. Uh, have you decided this week's guest? Yes. Uh, Andre, a.k.a. Here, let me find this profile first. Yeah, Andre. O-X-A-C-B. I don't know why it's popped this up. What? How did this get popped up on my page? But yeah, this person. This is going to be my guest. I think it's because I copy-pasted the link. He is going to be my guest for this week, hopefully. If all works out. He's also an MVP um, at Hacker One. Also a very, very good hacker. Could you say what do I use a VPS and how? That's a very long question, but you should use your VPS as a computer that you do all your automation tasks, do all your recon in, um, you know, anything that you might send the high traffic with. So automate your workflow of finding subdomains, screenshotting, and... Um, Directed brute forcing. Which kind of branch? So, which kind of branch and of hacking will be more popular in the future? I think stuff like the red teaming stuff is always going to be around, um, but I think like for us, for bug bounty hunters, like myself personally, I want to go into IoT. I think IoT and automotive are going to be huge. 
uh, audio program on Hacker One that social engineering is allowed. Yes, but I can't name them. Uh, I see all Hacker One on One videos and do some CTS, but I felt like I'm stuck in my learning. What do you recommend to me? Um, go back to my video, this this exact stream, and watch it all over again. I answer that a lot. Uh, DM me if you want the PDF for those books. Don't do that. Go buy them. Don't be the person that torrents with movies and books and give them to people for free. Go support someone who's helping your life. Um, what other question? Can someone type these? I'm on mobile. Type what? Oh, the username. Just go on my Twitter and look at my people that I follow. It would help. Mm, let's see. Naham Seg, I see all this hacker one on I already answered that. Just rewatch this video. I promise it will be worth it. I promise it will be worth it if you rewatch this video. I feel like that list would grow too long, to be honest. Yeah, I don't care. I don't want to do ranking of top 10. Just go and look at what other people follow. Um, just go look at the people that I follow. I follow some really good stuff um, in InfoSec. Don't go follow everyone that I follow, but you know. Um, cryptography is going to be good to some places, um, but cryptocurrencies, I don't know how it would be good for hacking. Um, let's see. Going down my Twitter feed to see if there's anybody else that I've missed. Donut is a really good one to also follow. Donut has a lot of good stuff too. I don't know why I forgot to mention him, but it should be already a, you know. Wow, Code Ingo is also a good one to follow, but it looks like he also just, uh, he just became the head of Hacker Enablement at Buckrout. That's really cool. I love Code Ingo. He's a really good dude. Yeah, Nafi is doing some really, really interesting uh, AMA right now. We should definitely follow him. All right, back to questions. I got t 10 more minutes. I think I answered everything so far. What do you think about GraphQL? I fucking hate it. Is that what you were asking? <laughs> what was my first swag? Hmm. What was my first swag? I think Buck Crowd gave me my first swag. I think it was the Buck Crowd t-shirts. The, uh, my other computer is your computer. I think so. Is Hacker One going to Argentina sometimes? Uh, maybe. I think we were just there, though. Not too long ago. We do a lot of things in Argentina. Kind of off topic for the Q&A, but any chance you can share your Verizon Media Word List with Direct Research? No, Leroy, I can't. But if you go to SecList, they're all in there. I just literally took them from SecList and then added stuff that I found interesting to it. Just started the EWAP, uh, what do you recommend after? OSCP, everyone says it's really, really good to do. I haven't done it yet, I wanna do it myself, but maybe at some point. Um, what do you think the toughest bug bounty hunter is? Who cares? <laughs> I don't know what that means. What do you mean by toughest? Like, who's gonna fight and win? Like, who's gonna fight who and they're gonna win? Is that what you're asking? I can see Peter Jaworski beating some people up. Like, he's a very nice guy, I can't see him fighting anyone. He gets called a bodyguard sometimes by some trolls online. Oh, Orange Sai is another one to uh, follow, by the way. Orange Sai, Jason Haddix, um, File Descriptor, uh, Ron Chan. What else? Um, yeah. If there was a bounty hunter, Royal Rumble. My money's on Pete. I don't care. I'm putting my money on Pete. Um, I don't know if OSCP is outdated, but it gives you the perspective to think with a um, attacker mentality, and it gives you some good perspective. So I think it's worth it. Frederick. I uh, mean Stoke. Stoke Frederick. 
All right. How was that QA? I think that went pretty well. I enjoyed doing that, actually. When will you receive Packer 1 hoodie on H1? I don't know. Email their support and ask them. I think you have to hit, like, some sort of a reputation thing on there. Santiago Lopez. Awesome dude. Very nice. And a very, very nice kid. Very, very shy and quiet, I feel like. But he's a very smart kid. I mean, he's a million dollar hacker, so. All right. This was very, very fun. Um... I do have a ca uh, flight to catch, even though I don't want to leave. But I am headed to LA. Um, we are going to try and get live with Stoke at some point. I don't know where, but do me a favor. Uh, I'm going to throw a link in the chat before everybody leaves. Don't leave me yet. I'm not done. Hold on. Come back. Hold on. I want to throw a link on the chat and hold on. Go to this channel and follow this channel if you want to join our live session. This is the channel for it. Go ahead and join it, and um, yeah, once it's done, we are going to, I mean, once we are in LA, we're going to join it live, and we're going to do our uh, session there, so go give it a follow, that's where we're going to go live from, and we're going to have a blast doing these interviews. I don't know what we're going to do for it yet, I just have to make sure I pack all my stuff and make sure we have everything ready. All right, I am going to cash this flight. Um, it's a short flight, but I have a ton to do on this flight. Um, what else? I think that's it. Bounty Thursdays isn't dead. It's just the problem with Bounty Thursdays is what's up, Phil Nook? Uh, my wife's screaming downstairs. Hold on. I hope you guys heard my wife screaming downstairs because that's really, really funny. Um, where was I? Oh, Bug Bounty Thursdays. Uh, Bounty Thursdays. It's not dead. You have to think about three different things. We want to put a quality... Uh, we want to put out quality content, right? The problem with quality content is you have to both be physically in the same place. And if you do it remote, it's a lot of problems, especially when you're doing it live. And on top of that... Um, on top of that, time zones don't work that well because you have to think about the fact that I work when he's awake and when he's nighttime for him. And when it's nighttime for me, he's asleep at 4 a.m. So there's a lot of things that we can't figure out. We are going to bring it back, I promise you. Um, I'm working on other podcasts as well that I'm going to bring out. But it's just very, very hard for us to put quality content out while we are uh, both in two different ends of the world. We want to put quality stuff out. It just makes it very difficult to do. Uh, what was my forum? I don't have a forum, but if you want to join my Discord, here is my Discord. Yeah, my wife was just happy because she's coming to LA with me, so she was just screaming out of happiness, I guess. Um, failed nuke. I thought you are going to be on time, but you just joined at the end. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> We're all leaving. Hey, Element, how's it going? Oh, you saw my Halloween pranks. Thank you. Those were fun. Oh, it was a happy scream. All right. I'm out. Thank you guys for joining again. Um, this was really fun. I think I should do more of these chatting uh, sessions on Tuesdays. I'm out. Happy Tuesday. Have a good rest of the day. If it's morning for you, if it's nighttime, evening time, have an absolute day, uh, uh, absolute great night. I have to have more coffee. And uh, mm, no stream this Saturday. If you're in here, don't show up on Saturday. I will not be online on Saturday on the account of being in L.A. But I will be back on Sunday for sure. So just keep in mind, Saturday, I'm out, not doing anything. Sunday, however, I will be back online. Um, and yeah, 
I'll see you guys all on Sunday. Thank you again for joining. Have an awesome night. Have an awesome morning. Good day. Goodbye. I'm out.